Hello there, Declan Walsh here from the Mad Ravens, and welcome to another one of our Mad Ravens monologues. And before we start, we'd like to just say a very big thank you to everybody who has checked out our piece that we did for St. Patrick's Day, called St. Patrick and the Sleeping Giant. And if you haven't had a chance to check it out yet, you'll find it on our Facebook page and YouTube channels. Now, as we continue to dive back into the archives, we're going to bring you a piece from an earlier Sean Person musical called The Moth and the Flame. And this was first performed by the Churchtown players back in the 1980s. It's informed by the Troubles, which provided a backdrop to the political and social scene back then. Unfortunately, Ireland and our people have moved and paved a better way to peace and harmony on the island since then. The monologue is performed by the one and only Mickey Murray, and the song is sung by Enya and Laura Curley, with Eddie McFarlane, Ken MacDonald and Glenn Garrett in the band. So, sit back and enjoy this wonderful monologue from The Moth and the Flame. You know, going home on a Friday evening is not too bad. A couple of pints in Maguire's, and a few sups left in the nagging, sitting nicely in my pocket. And a few pounds, of course, for the dragon. They know me well. Half a good thing, half a nuisance. They call me the captain. I said, I never donned a uniform. The football team, hey, now that captain. Mary Tynan's cat rubs his backside against the post box. A mile between every bloody lamppost. No wonder you're not safe. I remember other lampposts, other nights, other girls. Give us a kiss, Sally. You are the first girl I ever loved. Sweetheart, let me hold your hand and we'll stand under the lamplight. That's the scene, Charlie Donnelly. Your mother will clip your ears for you if she catches you. <laughs> oh, soft and tender she huddled from the wind. Won't you buy my pretty flowers? Or Annie, sitting with your knees up on the pavement, your face all beautiful framed in the yellow glow. Your willful ways leading me away on wild nights. And Margaret, the years we walked in. Oh, I can see them in the shadows. See, but can't touch. There's no comfort there. God love you, you're a good woman. A good wife. A good mother. I don't deserve you. Ah! Oh, drink deeply the drunken moments, spin away the listless hours. Hey, you remember, last of the lamppost is a rotten egg. <laughs> Let go of me bloody jumper. Clear to God, I'll smash your head. Hey, Charlie's got a sixpence. Oh, <laughs> we're made. And now Ryan, passing down the road on his bike, steal his bloody hat. <laughs> the eagot never even felt it. Mr. Ryan, did you lose something? Is this what you're looking for? <laughs> and him halfway down the road, and the Dowland twins scarpering through the church railings, and Mrs. Dowland calling after him, Come in, boys, yes, your dinner is poured out. <laughs> and him roaring and bawling out of him, and the twins cracking up behind the rail and raising him. Will you be quiet, Joe Legus? says Molly, brushing her hand. This is a respectable neighbourhood. And don't be using that feckin' language round here. <laughs> hey, what you you're pushing, young fellas? Where are you going with your collar up, anyway? Hey, I think I know you. Hold up there a wee minute. Hey, I said hey! He pulls the door of the telephone box open. The receiver is lifted. The buttons pound, but there's no familiar dial tone. The cord dangles uselessly. He swings round. The door slams shut.
and Charlie's on the corner. 